And my presentation is on Portugal's negative impact on the Kingdom of Congo, 1493 to 1700. We will be covering the Portuguese motives, uh, the date Portugal reached the Kingdom of Congo, the conversion of the kings of the Congo, the introduction of weapons into the Congo, the increased slave demands of the Portuguese, the alteration of the Congolese economy at the hands of the Portuguese, a strong disruption of the king's list, war that was created by the Portuguese in the Kingdom of Congo, and then I would conclude. The Portuguese negatively impacted the Kingdom of Congo in many ways. Before the arrival of the Portuguese, the Congo had an organized and established political, spiritual, and economic structure designed specifically for African people. After the Portuguese arrived, chaos ensued. The voluntary conversion to Christianity by King Nzinga Nkuwu was the beginning. The Portuguese fashioned themselves as friendly, pious, and powerful. They advertised themselves as a nation that wanted to have strong partnerships through trade. Their intentions were actually to westernize the region and to establish wealth. The Portuguese through religion, was able to infiltrate and influence the royal court of the Congo. They created dissent among the noble class and weakened the king's relationship with the people. They introduced weapons of mass destruction to the region and destroyed the Congo's previous economic structure in favor of a slave-based economy. The instability created by the Portuguese in the Kingdom of Congo led to war, a destruction of the Congolese succession of kings, and removed close to 5 million people out of the land. Portuguese motives. This is very important because there are quite a few disputes between historians on what the Portuguese role was in the Congo during this time of European exploration. And this will solve what the intentions were. By the time the Portuguese reached the Kingdom of Congo in 1483, their motives were already established. During their previous 68 years in Africa, the Portuguese had already waged war, enslaved and exploited many other African populations. The Portuguese were in search of new trade routes to the east because the old trade routes were dominated by Muslims. The Portuguese initial foray into Africa was for the purpose of an armed offensive towards Muslims in North, in North Africa. While in North Africa, the Portuguese discovered the wealth of the continent. The Portuguese were in search of the Christian realm of the legendary Prester John. And this is important right here. A series of papal bulls, decrees which came down from the Pope, were sent down by the Pope Nicholas V that granted Portugal the right to enslave sub-Saharan Africans. The Pope issued the mandate to the Portuguese king, Alfonso V, to invade, vanquish, and subdue all Saracens and pagans whatsoever, and to reduce the persons to perpetual slavery and to apply appropriate to himself and his successor the kingdoms, dukedoms, counties, principalities, dominions, possessions, and goods, and to convert them to his and their use and profit. That is a quote, and in the background is the actual document. So the intent of the Portuguese was established right there. Portuguese explorer, explorer Giago Cao reaches the Kingdom of Congo. Giago Cao reached the Kingdom of Congo in 1482, 1483, the date is disputed. The first thing he did when he reached the Kingdom of, Con Kingdom of Congo, as he did when he reached other locations on the coast of Africa, was plant a stone pillar, a Catholic stone pillar, which is what you see right here in this picture. And planting that, stat that uh, statue, 
or that stone pillar, he was laying claim to that land in the name of the Portuguese king and the Pope. When he arrived in the king, kingdom of Congo also, he kidnapped two Congolese nobles and took them back to Portugal. Before leaving to go back to Portugal, he sent two of his men further up the Congo River to meet the king. King, king of Congo converted to Christianity. The first king of the Congo that converted to Christianity was King Nkubu. In Cuba, in king Nkubu saw many similarities between uh, his spiritual traditions and the Portuguese spiritual traditions. Although they weren't exactly similar, he saw some similarities. He also believed a lot of what the Portuguese said when they arrived at his court. The conversion of the royal court nobles caused a fracture throughout the kingdom. The Catholic missionaries positioned themselves in the royal court of the Congo. They began to influence political and economic decisions. The disconnect between the royal court the people and the noble class grew. The royal council no longer advised the king of Congo on important matters. The new centralized royal power was a new phenomenon in the Congo. Before that, the Congo normally convened with uh, village elders, with chiefs from the region and different provinces to decide on certain topics. But now the power was centralized. And the king of the Congo was more connected to the king in Portugal and to the Pope through um, through divinity and through their belief in Catholicism. But the king only converted because the, the Portuguese missionaries promised immense power, immense wealth and eternal life. And that appealed to the king of Congo. The Portuguese introduced firearms to the Congo. The Portuguese introduced new weaponry to the Congo. The new weaponry included bombards, artillery, cannons, and hook guns. These new devastating weapons introduced to a society who largely used bows and arrows and spears tipped the balance of power tremendously in the region. The people of the Congo associated the power of the modern weaponry, Portuguese weaponry, to the spiritual power of the Portuguese. The Portuguese propagated that falsehood. The desire to obtain firearms from the foreigners increased the status of the Portuguese. So the more the Congolese wanted that power, wanted those firearms, it made the Portuguese that much more important. Firearms was a key component in raids to kidnap people for enslavement. It wasn't as easy before to do that. And it wasn't going on before. All right. On most occasions, the Portuguese would only trade weapons for people. <laughs> Portugal increased slave demands. Before the Portuguese arrived in the Congo, the Congo did not have a system of serv servitude similar to what the Portuguese introduced. The only people thrusted into that system of servitude the Congolese did have were usually foreigners as a result of war. Those prisoners of war were not institutionalized perpetually and their humanity was not stripped from them. It was not a race-based system of servitude. Their children was not born into servitude. That didn't exist in Africa before the arrival of the Portuguese. If you recall the papal decree of Pope Nicholas V from slide four, the Portuguese intention from 1452 onward was to either convert or enslave infidels into perpetual slavery. The initial servants given to the Portuguese were foreign born and usually prisoners of war. Um, so the rise in the demand of slaves by the Portuguese began to change the criteria for who could be enslaved. The criteria shifted from being foreign prisoners of war to being brothers or even neighbors. Status, wealth, and the economy became enormously dependent on slavery in the Congo from the early 15th century until the mid-17th century. 
Slavery was so rampant in October 1514, King Alfonso of the Congo wrote a lengthy letter to King Manuel of Portugal complaining about the gente, or the freeborn Congolese people being kidnapped from the empire. So many people were being kidnapped that it was negatively affecting the economy and population of the kingdom. The Congo had a rule to not take women, but the Catholic priests, many of them came to the Congo specifically to disregard that rule and take women as slaves for sexual purposes. Portugal neg negatively altered the Congo's economy. Before the arrival of the Portuguese, the Kingdom of Congo, their economy was based on agriculture and trade with surrounding regions. They used cowrie shells and some gold coins as currency. After the Portuguese arrived in the Congo, the number one currency soon became people. The demand for slaves for slaves to man the demand for slaves to man the newly established Portuguese plantations in the New World accelerated the kidnapping of Africans dramatically. If the Congo wanted to maintain their trade relationship with Portugal, they had to provide people. As time went on, the number one trade commodity any foreign power would accept from the Congo were slaves. So the economy became based on slavery. Not on rubber, not on gold, not on ivory, not on any of the previous commodities that they used to become a strong empire previous to the Portuguese. The Portuguese disrupted the Congo's kings list. This slide is pretty much about um, the death of a king in the Congo by the name of Dom Diago. He died in 1561. But for decades, the Portuguese have been trying to influence the succession of the kingship in the Congo. There were many Congolese that did not convert to Catholicism and did not were not in favor of the role that the Portuguese missionaries and merchants and, and Portuguese advisors were playing in the Congolese royal court. The Portuguese tried to establish who they wanted to be the succeeding king. They wanted the king to practice monogamy, so they wanted his firstborn son to automatically ascend to the throne. But the king of Congo was a polygamist, so he had children amongst different clans from different regions in the kingdom, and he wanted to appoint who he wanted to appoint. If not, if he died suddenly, the, the council and the people would decide who would be the next ruler. And that happened in this case. And the Portuguese murdered the selection of the people. But the people, in turn, murdered the puppet ruler that the Portuguese wanted to put in place. This was for the first time in over 200 years, the kingship was in question. So... The brother of Dom Diago had to take over, but he was older and he soon died after a war that he waged. He soon died a few years later. So now the kingship was up for grabs and that king's list was cut for the first time. And that was a precious, precious element of Congolese culture. And as a result, the Congolese rebelled against the Portuguese and killed all the Portuguese they felt was responsible for this, for this confusion and this chaos. The Portuguese caused wars in the Congo. Um, wars were started by, the, by Portugal and Congo with neighboring populations in order to fill the Portuguese slave quota with prisoners of war. The Congo, as mentioned earlier, had rules against enslaving native-born Congolese citizens, although the Portuguese merchants and Portuguese um, visitors was going against those rules. They still had those rules in place, and they fought to keep them that way. By the 1600s, Congo's expansion had stopped. In order for the supply of slaves to continue to flow, civil war began. Civil war would include enslavement of native Congos. That was an opportunity for people to en enslave and capture their countrymen in order 
to continue to gain wealth through the Portuguese weapons or commodities that came from other parts of the Portuguese uh, empire. In conclusion, the Congo was not completely destroyed as a result of their relationship with the Portuguese. Because throughout this time, you had many wars between the Portuguese and the Congolese. You had many kings that tried to reject a lot of the um, a lot of the things and a lot of the elements that the Portuguese was trying to bring in to the population and trying to bring into the kingdom. So the Portuguese never truly got a, a strong grip on the Congo, yet they altered a lot of the elements of the Congo. With that said, Congo's customs, traditions, and, and spirituality was severely altered as a result of their interaction with the Portuguese. The Congo is also to blame for allowing the Portuguese to infiltrate their culture, infiltrate their royal court, and their community to the extent in which they did. The hospitality of the African was and is their greatest gift and their greatest curse because this very thing happened throughout Africa. By the 1700s, the Congo's economy was mostly dependent on slave labor. There was a decline in the centralization of power and the power of clans began to emerge. A power struggle for the throne will continue for the next 100 years. By 1839, the British had abolished slavery they made sure no slaves were transported across the Atlantic. At that point, the Congo returned back to their natural resources and began to trade in rubber and ivory. Here's a quote by an author by the name of Roger Crowley, who wrote on the expansion of the Portuguese empire. And this quote encapsulate the role that the Portuguese played in a different regions they went to to conquer. The Portuguese shot first and never went away. Conquest was a rolling national project. Year after year, deepening their position until they became impossible to dislodge. And that was by Roger Crowley. And the name of the book was called Conquerors, How Portugal Forged the First Global Empire. Here is my citation page. Thank you for listening. This has been my presentation on a negative impact the Portuguese had on the Kingdom of Congo. Thank you.